okay? Um, so congratulations to each and every one of you. So we have a speaker today, um, Mr. Kyle Perkins from Big Frog is here, and he's going to share a little bit about what he does um, in his career and um, give us some information, and then Ms. Sanchez is going to close us out, okay? So let's welcome Mr. Perkins. Good morning, everyone. Wow, that was kind of weak. Let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Much better. Okay, so we're a little wet. All righty. Everyone, everyone. The sooner we do this, the sooner it's over. All right. Alrighty. First off, I want to try a little social experiment. Now, I usually do this with smaller networking groups, but it just energizes me to see so many people in the same room together. So, on the count of three, I want everyone to shout, Big Frog! Okay, ready? One, two, three! Big Frog! Oh, come on, I know the donut hasn't settled yet. Let's try that again. One, two, three! Yes, thank you for indulging me. I am Kyle Perkins with Big Frog Custom T-shirts and more. Okay, okay, I know the energy is up, but let's wipe down a little bit, all right? All right. For my next trick. For my next trick, I want to time travel, but I don't see a time machine anywhere around here, so we'll have to do it with our minds, okay? Talk later, okay? Okay, so everyone, everyone, there we go, okay. For this little time travel experiment, let's go back in our minds. Back, back, back to the beginning of time. Now fast forward to 1993. 1993, yes. For the teachers, I'm sure that seems like yesterday. For you guys, you have no idea what that is. For me, I was six. Okay? Now, halfway through 1993, my parents moved from a small beach town on the eastern coast of North Carolina to Cary. And my dad opened up a specialty plant business. If you ever heard of hostas, that's what he sold. And I was inspired by him because he started his own business. And I thought, hey, I could do the same thing. Why not? Maybe not plants, but something happier. Not your typical lemonade stand that everyone has started nowadays, but something happier than that. And what else could I do that was happy? Well, not there yet. I went to my room. I got some polished rocks. Very shiny rocks, too. I got some googly eyes, and I glued the googly eyes to the shiny rocks. And then I drew on a smile with a sharpie. And Happy Rocks was born, my first business venture. I set up a table while my dad was selling his plants, and I sold each of my little googly eyed shiny rocks, smile sharpie face thingy for 25 cents. And everyone loved them. And every single time that I had a table out there, I sold more, and I sold more, and I sold more, and I sold more. And I, and eventually, at the end, I had a whole five dollars. Honestly, 
it felt pretty amazing. Now, I don't know if the people that were buying the plants for my dad wanted to just support the cute kid of the owner. And to this day, I still don't know and I don't care because I sold things and it felt great. Now, I enjoyed the idea of the entrepreneurial spirit, but I never really knew what that actually meant, and I wouldn't know for many more years. So let's fast forward to the latter part of my elementary school, where I participated in a class that had a very interesting idea. It mixed the concepts of Legos and motorized parts. I had never seen such a thing, and this was in the days before Mindstorm. But the idea of merging mechanical parts and Legos just seemed like something never heard of, never seen, never thought of. And the idea of having this computerized language, this set of special keywords and instructions to tell Legos what to do, that was mind-blowing to me. I had never seen such a thing, and I really, really enjoyed it. But, but, what I did not know was that this started a lifelong obsession with computer programming. That was pretty awesome. Now let's fast forward a little bit to 1998, the tail end of the 20th century. I was in middle school, just like you guys. Although I was at Martin Middle School, not Durant, but same concept, right? And I was introduced to many new electives. But my favorite was computer class. Now my computer class back then was a little unusual. We learned typing, we learned how to use the file browser, we learned the basics of the internet, and I learned the, the concepts very quickly. Meanwhile, the other students in the class were still figuring out what the mouse was. Does anybody here know what a mouse is on a computer? Good, okay. So you're further than I was, got it. So, guys, come on. So, while I was still learning about computers, I also was able to browse the early days of the internet. And yes, that did exist. And I learned that there were ways to build websites. And I thought, this was the next best thing. I could use the same set of instructions that I learned in elementary school to build websites. And I thought websites were magical back then. I thought websites had everything under the sun and it was the best thing ever. And I could actually learn this magic and do this magic myself. My interest was definitely beat. Before I knew it, it was 2001 and high school came. And I entered into coding courses, any coding courses that I could get my hands on. When, and that's when things really took off. And I learned everything I could from books, from guides, from exercises, from forums. And if you say check out YouTube, YouTube didn't exist back then, so no video guides for me. With my exploration of the different programming languages and what they all did, I had found my passion. Since then, my experience of programming languages and coding continued throughout high school and into college, where I began to take my passion more seriously. Upon arriving at college, I decided to enter business school, because why not? I finally had a chance to merge my two greatest interests, coding 
in business. That's what I wanted to do. So I did what any upstart entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur wanted to do and started my own web company. I thought, it would be, I thought it would be just as easy as before. Gather up some supplies, have a big flashy banner, and people would be running up to you, handing you piles of money. It wasn't that easy. Nobody knew about my business. Nobody knew what I did. Nobody even knew what I offered. I didn't even know what I did. Making sales is not easy. Managing projects is not easy. Customers are not easy. And don't even get me started on managing a business's finances. That's a whole different concept. Now, lots of people will say, you should start a business. However, it's easy to start a business. It's not as easy to keep it running, as I would soon learn. I ran that first actual business of mine for eight stubborn years. Eight years, yeah, believe it. And after eight stubborn years, I could not take it anymore. I threw in the towel. Because, because I needed to reevaluate my life's goals. Now, one of my college professors introduced a book which I admittedly didn't read. However, one of the phrases in the book really stuck with me. And that phrase is, to work on your business, not in your business. And back then, I really didn't know what that meant, but it stuck with me for some reason. I mean, why wouldn't you work in the business? You had to learn everything. You had to learn how to manage customers, how to price things, how to set up operations, how to actually do the business. So why wouldn't you work in the business? It made no sense to me. So, during the next five years, after I closed that business and went on a little adventure of my own, I went through plenty of ups and downs in many different fields, such as retail, fast food, casino dealer, teaching community college, and even going overseas and teaching English to Japanese middle school and elementary school kids, which was kind of fun, honestly. But, but, at that point, life had a different direction for me. Now I can say from personal experience that the job market is brutal and it's only going to get worse. So what was I to do? Well, certain circumstances lined up and I was presented with an opportunity to open a custom t-shirt store. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? I thought the idea of selling t-shirts was insane because doesn't everyone go online and buy things nowadays? I mean, really, that might have me. However, however, I was persuaded by certain parties to venture forth with this idea, to go into the world of retail again. But I had one caveat, and that caveat was to work on the business, not in the business. This was a lesson that I learned the hard way through my first set of companies because I did everything. And because I did everything, 
I stretched myself so thin that I couldn't see where I was going. I had no idea how I wanted to grow the business. I had no idea what the next phase looked like. I just wanted to get through today and see tomorrow. I mean, who doesn't want that, right? However, since I was stretching myself so thin, I was also driving myself insane. I wasn't thinking, I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't thinking. That's how stressed out I was. So based on that, I learned that by working in the business, you are so inundated with the day-to-day -day activities of everything going on. The phones, the emails, the customer questions, the preparing of projects, the proofs, the proposals, everything else that goes with it, that you really don't know how to grow the business. And that's what I learned. So, by going into this new venture, I learned to work on the business, which did require me to first learn the basics, but then I hired employees to do those jobs for me so that I could come out, meet new people, work with the community, and do great events like this. Meanwhile, my employees can be at the store, which should be arriving 15 minutes, to actually deal with the day-to-day -day activities so I can focus on growing the business. So based on that, I've had my new business for the past five years. And I've done quite a lot. I've learned quite a lot. First, I became involved with local networking groups, including business alliances for schools. I am active in many local chambers. I have befriended countless local business owners, all while I explored the science and the art of t-shirt printing. Along the way, I was invited to join the School to Career Council for Wake County Public School Systems. I think that's pretty neat. So every day has a new challenge. Everyone, have your attention please. Almost done, I promise. So every day has a new challenge. And instead of fearing what tomorrow brings, I welcome each day's challenge as I move forward. I learn that each challenge brings its own set of opportunities. I welcome each day's challenge to see if what I can learn from it. My mindset has changed so that large challenges don't seem as large. And a great team is behind me that I can lean on, trust, delegate to, and assign responsibility. So, what have I learned in my 30 odd years? Well, in elementary school, I learned to keep your options open. You don't know what you could explore. From middle school, I learned to dive deeper into those options and learn what you like to do. In high school, I learned to push through the hard times and success should come. From college, I learned that a lot of people will tell you what to do, but it's up to you to decide what you actually do. And from business, ideas are great, but action is a necessary hardship. But you need to move forward. 
and don't spend so much time that you don't focus on yourself. So, if you walk away from today and don't remember anything else I said except this one thing, let it be this one thing, okay? Life is options. Explore your options while you have them because you may not know when you don't have them. Guys, give me 30 more seconds. I'm like, that's all I'm asking. So in conclusion, life has driven me down many different paths. Many that I didn't expect. And throughout it all, I have learned quite a lot. But I'll never be finished learning. I don't and won't know everything. But I'm learning something new every day. And tomorrow always seems brighter. Thank you.